this is what shadow looks like. This is also what shadow looks like. This is also what shadow looks like. So I'm going to start by saying painting a vehicle is no easy job. Like many of the things that I've done so far in the creation of Shadow, I'd never ever done that task before and painting was no different. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the individual steps that I went through in order to get from this. What shadow looks like today um, and there is no denying that it was hard work uh, some of the YouTube videos I watch in the world of people doing things like painting their vehicles building out vans building tiny houses I feel like no one ever mentioned how hard this madness is and I think of all the things I've done so far painting was maybe the hardest of all of the steps with that said, I want to go ahead and tell you how I did it. So this is the paint system I used. And it's made by a company called Upo. And the name of the paint is Raptor. So what I really liked about working with Raptor Liner is that it was incredibly simple. Um, almost foolproof, actually. They send you everything you need. They tell you exactly how to mix the materials. All you have to do once you get your materials mixed, shake it up, attach it to your paint gun. This guy is one of the paint guns that I used. You just slide it in to your bottle of Raptor liner and then you get to spraying. Now, um, there's a missing part in what I just said, which is the compressor. Uh, the compressor connects to this end of the gun here. Um, I worked with a six pound compressor. Uh, I believe the system recommends that you work with at least a 10 pound compressor. I did notice the difference. Um, well, I don't know what it would have been like working with a 10 pound compressor, but it probably would have been a little less cumbersome than it was for me working with a, sim a six pound compressor. But it was what I had access to without having to spend any extra money. Um, and from what I see with my end results, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So this is Raptor Liner. And depending on the color that you're working with, the kit works in different ways if you're working with say straight black like this down here all you need to do is you take your bottle of black Raptor liner and then you mix in your hardener inside of the bottle there is a line so the Raptor liner paint is probably about to this level inside the bottle so then you pour in hardener until you get to this line close it up shake it up really good for about two minutes or so and then attach it to your gun and you're ready to go if you're working with a color uh, for instance the very top of shadow the roof i painted it white to try to um, help with heat and then all of the corrugated steel at the top of shadow all of that material is a dark charcoal gray so in the case of those colors it comes with one of these I'm not sure if you can see it I hope you can but it says tintable this particular bottle of paint uh, has no specific color to it or right, well I, I guess it's white and it's ready for you to mix in whatever your tint your tinting color will be so you have this guy and it's ready for you to mix it in and if in the case of my charcoal up top I poured in a little bottle like this it was this size of charcoal into this container then I also added my hardener up to this line shook it up attached it to my gun it was ready to go so the parts of mixing the paint attaching it to the gun spraying it we'll get back to spraying it but the parts of mixing it attaching it to the gun all of that was really simple and I'm gonna say almost impossible to get wrong it was the parts that you had to do before you painted that was the part that made this job difficult so before i could even start the process of painting the truck one of the things i needed to do was i needed to rough up 
all of the paint surfaces on the truck. Anything that I was going to paint, I had to sand it so that I could get rid of the gloss. So this entire truck, I had to go through and sand it. And not just the parts with the paint, I also had to sand the corrugated metal at the top of the truck as well. Sanding took forever, but it's an important step and you want to make sure you do it correctly. How do I know it's an important step that you want to do correctly? There are parts in the truck that I did not do that step correctly. So my corner pieces that go around the edges of my corrugated steel at the top, I foolishly looked at them and thought, oh, you already have these striated marks on you. So you're probably already rough, of, rough enough to be able to hold the primer and hold the paint. That was not the case. So far, it's holding on pretty well. I don't see any areas where it's really peeling up, but it is not as strong or as resistant as the paint on the rest of the truck is. So what that means is that over time, with impact, uh, that paint is gonna chip and chip and peel. So I'm going to have to eventually repaint all of my corner brackets. Am I going to do it right now? No, I'm not. But I am aware that I made that mistake. Um, and I can use the mistake that I made to tell you guys not to make that same mistake. Literally any surface on your paint that any surface on your vehicle that you are going to apply the paint to, you have to sand it. So after I went through and sanded the entire vehicle, I had to prime all the metal. So I worked with another product also made by Upol called um, Epoxy. It was epoxy primer it wasn't they have an etching primer i didn't go with that one i went with just the straight epoxy primer and i primed all of the metal surfaces to help with paint adhesion when i went through to paint it with my actual top coat um other things i had to do to prep the truck lots of taping i taped off all the windshields Oh, well, all the windshields. I taped, I only have one. I taped off the windshield. I taped off all the windows. Um, all of my windows that are a part of the house part of my truck, all of that was masked. I removed my lights, went through, detached all of this, taped all of these, all of this material off, taped off all of my metal, um, decals all of that and that part of the process took a really time a really long time as well um if i didn't remove it then i had to tape it off and i tried to be really really precise in the way that i taped it so that i could get clean lines um so then once i did that once everything was primed well not primed yeah once everything was taped off and sanded i also had to clean the whole truck down with a degreaser uh and that was also cumbersome so i got a degreaser and had to clean this whole thing down with that and once i cleaned the whole truck down with the degreaser then i was ready to prime the metal and then start painting all the rest of the truck now it's important to point out that when you're sanding if metal becomes Comes exposed at any part in the process you also have to go and prime any exposed metal uh, that peeks its way through some other things I did just out of paranoia um, I primed plastic parts that I was going to paint. So the grill here, this part is made of plastic. I primed this as well just in case to make sure that the paint would stick to it. So yeah, I did all of that. And once all of those steps were done, I was ready to go and I was ready to start painting, start spraying the truck. And there are multiple different ways that you can spray this paint and that's where it gets a little complicated. All the other steps are kind of foolproof, but when it comes down to actually painting, actually spraying the truck, that's where it can get a little complicated depending on the type of surface texture you're trying to accomplish. I'm gonna go around and show you what my surface texture looks like and then I'm gonna tell you how I achieved my particular surface texture. So this is a surface of shadow. Overall, I was going for a fairly rough texture and I wanted it to be matte. I was not at all interested in having a glossy truck.
So the thing you need to know about Raptor Liner paint is that it does not spray on like regular paint. This is something I did not know when I started this process. It actually sprays on as little droplets. And you are trying to, in the case of me, trying to cover a very yellow, very, very yellow truck with little droplets of black paint. It was as difficult as that task sounds and so I started off and I did probably I did about three or four passes of the paint in order to get the coverage that I was looking for um, but I used specific settings on both my compressor and my gun in order to get the desired end results that I have here. So the first thing that I did, um, I did a pass and my pressure on my compressor was set to about uh, 60 PSI. Um, so my, yeah, my pressure was set at about 60 PSI and I did my first spraying maybe about, I was holding my gun at about maybe a foot away from the truck. So I was about this far away from the truck when I did my first pass of the paint. And I tried to get it as covered as I possibly could with that first pass. Once I let that first pass um, sit, I had to let it sit for an hour. Once I let it sit for an hour, I went through with my third, fourth, second third and fourth passes and i changed the settings on my compressor for those passes so for the next couple of passes i changed my pressure from 60 psi to 80 psi and then i also stood about three feet away from the truck to spray so um yeah so i went from this distance to about this distance I think you can see me. I hope you can. If you can, if I stepped out of the frame of the camera, um, I went from one foot being away from the truck to about three feet being away from the truck. The very first pass at three feet, I had the gun um, pretty much perpendicular to the surface of this truck while I was spraying it. And then I let that pass sit and dry for an hour. But for my third and fourth passes, I did it very differently. Well, not very differently. I was still set at 80 PSI. I was still about three feet away. But instead of spraying directly head on perpendicular with the truck, I sprayed the paint on at a 45 degree angle. Now that may seem like, why would you do that? The reason I, changed my angle to a 45 degree because instead of me directly spraying the paint and it making like direct contact with the truck the 45 degree angle allowed me to basically dust the paint onto the truck and that is what allowed me to build up a pretty nice level of texture it's hard to really translate how textured shadow is in the video but she is really pretty damn oh <laughs> she is really pretty textured so by holding the gun at a 45 degree angle um to the surface of the truck it allowed the paint to kind of mist onto the surface in bigger in bigger droplets which allowed for me to build up a really nice surface texture and that's all i did um i say all i did but when i tell you this process was really 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 labor intensive it took me about three weeks to get the whole truck painted and i though i couldn't work every day on the truck because of my job and other things um I was putting in on the days that I could work on the truck, I was putting in 1.30 a.m. mornings. The final day of painting, I painted the truck until 4.30 a.m. Now there's other important things that you need to know. So this paint, it needs time to cure. It kind of dries hard, almost like a resin. It's really interesting. And what makes this paint great is that it's dent resistant, 
to a certain degree. It's scratch resistant and I really wanted something that could be durable for my home. Um, but it needs time to cure. So once you painted 24 hours in the, tr the paint is like, it's dry, it's dry to the touch, but you need at least three days of cure time before you can get the truck wet, which is why I stayed up till 4 30 in the morning, finishing that final layer of paint because the facility that I was painting the truck in I had to get it out of there two days from that date and the day after I was taking it out of the facility it was going to rain so that meant that I had a very tight three-day window in order to let the paint properly cure before it could get wet so you need three days for the paint to cure after those three days you need a full seven days now I don't mean like three plus seven I mean just from the day that you paint it uh, to the seventh day uh, that's how much time you need before the paint can receive any type of impact uh, or hold any type of pressure of any kind so that's the full process but you don't really have to do anything during that time period you just need to make sure the truck is properly or the vehicle is properly protected um, until the paint has the full window of time to do its thing yeah it's completely sturdy as sturdy as it's supposed to be uh and i'm really happy with the end results i, I could not be happier though there are areas of imper imperfection and i want to show you those areas there's things that i'm going to have to do later i'm going to have to touch it up there's a few areas that still need to be painted and i'm going to go ahead and show you those areas of imperfection because i don't want to have this image of like oh i painted this truck perfectly because there are parts that need to be redone do you want to see where my imperfections are? I'll go ahead and show them to you. <laughs> so looking inside of here, we can see a glimmer of yellow. This is the line that leads inside the hood. Coming right here, when I peeled the paint off, not the paint, sorry, when I peeled the tape off, um, I let it sit for too long. So the paint had a, a chance to really attach to the tape. So when I peeled it off, it peeled off of the truck here. Inside the door on this side, you can see a glimmer of yellow, but that is not at all the case on this side. So I need to touch that side up um, and extend the paint a bit more so that you can't see any signs of yellow um, from the outside. I was able to touch these guys up and really get them really nice and clean and perfect around my lights. But on this side, I still need to touch it up and cover those last little bits of yellow that are shining through. Right here on this part, I had a little bit of overspray of the black make its way onto the gray. So I'm going to need to touch that up as well. And I had the same thing happen here with a bit of overspray. So outside of those little areas I just showed you, I am so over the top happy with how Shadow turned out. I went in a little nervous because I just, I wasn't sure how this was going to work out. And this is a really big change and an important change because that, this surface, this color, this paint, this is what people are going to see when they look at her. And I wanted it to be done as well as I possibly could. And I think that, um, with my skill level, with the fact that I've never done this before, that I did a pretty good job of making sure um, Shadow turned out in a way that would blow my mind. Also, I think that it could have turned out way worse than this, and I probably still would have been mind blown um, by the end result of it. This paint is really lovely. I'm going to put links in the bottom uh, for Amazon the for where I bought it. I could say that a lot better. I'm going to put links in the bottom, Amazon links, uh, for the paint that I purchased in case you're interested in also using these same systems. One of the cool thing about one of the cool things about buying the paint through Amazon is that almost every order I made came with a paint gun. So I ended up with something ridiculous like seven paint guns, which was great because it gave me a lot of 
room to experiment. I ended up with three different types of guns based on the paints that I ordered from Amazon. And I was able to really experiment with each of them to figure out which ones were the best fit for what I was trying to accomplish. So yeah. That's it. That's Shadow. This is what she looks like for now. And right now I'm focusing on the inside, uh, getting really important work done. And I'm going to make videos about that as well. I made a promise on Instagram. I don't know who here is and isn't following me on Instagram at Summer Seeking. But I made a promise that I'm going to try to be on a posting schedule, which means that I'm going to try to post either every Friday or every other Friday um, so that I can get consistent content out into the world for you to um, use hopefully in a useful way for any builds that you are trying to accomplish for yourself as well and you can learn from the mistakes that I've made along the way but yeah that's all I have for today thank you so much for watching if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you don't tell me why so I can improve along the way um, Follow me on Instagram, as I just mentioned, Summer Seeking. And until next time, I appreciate you guys so much. Peace.